everybody, and welcome to EdTech Chat and to episode number 38. And today we have some news for everyone. We're going to be launching our next, I guess it'll be probably the last one for the school year, Global Project. And you know what's cool about this one? It's for all ages, kind of like some of the others that we've done with Valentine's or the Kid Wish. This one does bring out creativity as well. And before we jump into that one, Let's introduce everyone on the podcast. I'm Diane Smokorowski. I am a technology integrationist from Andover, Kansas. And today we have Mike from Pennsylvania. Hi, everyone. And we have Karen from Texas. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to be creative. Are you? Absolutely. I'm really excited about this project. I'm ready to have some fun. And what is the name of our project, Karen? <sighs> Squiggles. Squiggly 15. Squiggles of awesome. Squiggles of awesome. That's like the awesome part. It's I, awesome. I so love the name. <laughs> and I said that go, that little title goes to our friends at Big Monocle. I've been thinking about this project for a long, long time. I, I ran it back in 2005 and called it the Four Lines of Sight because basically it's four lines on paper and you ask kids all over the world to take those lines and turn it into a picture. But the four lines of sight didn't mean anything to anybody. They're like, I don't get it. So I was really struggling, and my friends at Big Monocle, they said, because Squiggles are awesome. I said, that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> so the title uh, goes to those guys. And, <clears throat> and just as we said, it's taking lines like this. You can turn them any direction that make you happy, that makes you happy. And we're asking children to do the same and finish the picture. And we're actually going to do a little drawing with you guys today. Um, I'm using Doodle Buddy. Uh, Mike, that's what you're using too? Yep, I'm, I'm using Doodle Buddy too. I'm actually doodling as you talk because I, I, uh, <laughs> I guess I should wait. That's <laughs> no, no, you're good. And Karen, what, tool, what app are you going to use today? I'm using Hello Crayon. Hello Crayon, fantastic. And... You know, what's really interesting about this project is not only is it easy, any grade level can jump into this. So we're asking kindergarten kids all the way up to seniors in high school, so ages 5 through 18 around the globe can be a part of it. And it was pretty simple to do. It was just a matter of inserting some squiggly lines on a, on a canvas of some sort, and then we just went in and added the drawings. And I know you guys are still drawing here just a little bit, but... Another thing that's been sitting in the back of my mind comes from Ginger Lumen. The idea of the sketch noting. Have you guys done that at all? No. I've seen a lot of Andrea's sketch noting on Facebook lately. I'm like, ooh, that looks really it's fun. Really, really <laughs> cool. Uh, Mike, do you know about sketch noting? What it is? No, no. Teach me. This is this sounds good. Well, basically, you know, you've always in the past had to listen to a lecture experience, and especially in the secondary classes, right? And we've taken the copious notes and make sure we did outlines, whatever works for you. Well, not every child functions well in the linear format. So this idea of sketch noting is using doodles for your notes. Hmm. A mixture of text and animation together, or at least not animation so much, but just drawings. So if you think about something like the Civil War, you might have like the two flags sitting up there is like your headline for the Civil War. You see a lot of this being done in infographics. So so I'm picturing when you're talking about it, I'm picturing like the, the RSA animate Sir Ken Robinson kind of yes. talk like kids kids taking that as notes, they're kind of doodling the storyline or whatever, you know, whatever it happens exactly. to be. Yeah. Exactly. And you can visually remember what you did, which is I think really awesome. Hmm. Exactly. And you can use markers, pencils, whatever works well for you. But really giving the students an idea of taking information and processing it visually. And the, what I have done was just a sample activity with Ginger Lumen, who we all know and love. And she had taken another TED Talk, a very much a smaller one, and asked us to do that during the, the TED Talk. And I will tell you, even though I wasn't looking at the person, my ears were in tune. I'm like, I want to make sure I get every detail. And I was processing information actually faster, I would say. And I definitely remember it more than just writing words down on paper. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, that's so what we, that's what we want our kids to be able to do. 
Exactly. Yeah. And it's kind of fun. Besides, you know, I mean, well, we're not. I, but I, I think that's why it works because I mean, you know, like I've, I've in so many different talks, whatever I've talked about, you know, kids need an emotional connection to be able to transfer things from short term to long term memory, right? Well, you know, every, when you're being creative, that emotional connection's there, and if you're being creative while you're processing new information. You're making those connections. I mean, think about how many times when you, you know, you can relate where you were when you had a certain smell, or, or you know, um, you know, for me when I'm running, I, I can remember parts of the run where something cool happened because that's, you know, that's where it was meaningful for me when I, you know, saw a porcupine sitting in a tree on the side of the run. Like that's something I remember because it's an experience that connects with you. And so while kids are taking their notes, you know, that's making those connections for them. I can see why it's, you know, why it's a great way of taking notes. Well, here's what I like about it is that um, when I was growing up, you know, old school, we would have to copy notes and it had to look exactly like my teacher's notes. And if it didn't, if it wasn't organized in her exact format, I was marked off for it. So I had to look the same. And what I like about this is that the student is in charge of the organization of the notes and how they're going to see it. Nobody's notes will look the same because we're all thinking differently and we're processing things differently and we're visualizing things differently. So you probably would, you know, you're going to learn a lot from your notes, but then when you look at someone else's notes, you're going to see something that's genius as well. Like, oh, wow, I didn't think about that. And yeah. I think that's the, the neatest part about the doodle noting. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. And I'm pulling up an image now. Um, there's a couple of books that are out there. And there's, of course, it's a little bit cut off, but it's the Sketch Noting Handbook. You can get it at Amazon. Noting it down. <laughs> yeah. The, visual, the Illustrated Guide to Visual Note Taking. You can buy the Kindle version for about 17 and uh, the paperback version is 25 This is a little, that way you can see the whole thing. Sketch note. Oh. <laughs> we good. saw it for a second. That was good. There you go. Sketch noting handbook. And the author is Mike Rode, R-O-H-D-E. And he actually has three different resources out there. There's a workbook as well that you can get. Hmm. So you can get part one and part two sort of a thing. And he does have a tutorial DVD kind of thing to help. So Diane, have you have you read the book already? I have. Well, Ginger had a copy of it, so I kind of thumbed through it. And okay. uh, we just received money for a grant, so we're going to be ordering copies very soon. I am super excited. Nice, nice. Uh, I just yeah. want to know before I go buy it right now. No. <laughs> and that's me. I'm like, oh, oh to go. <laughs> Go grab it. But they're kind of expensive. You know, you've got 25 for one and 26 yeah. for the other one. Okay. But, yeah, I, I'm going to have to have them. I'm just going to I'm that way. So I just, I just want to make sure because I totally trust your opinion on books here. So. Oh, man. It's, well, it's, if, it's, if it's recommended by Smoke and by Ginger, I yeah, think, I think I it's a pretty it. safe bet, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I well, I, I'm gonna handle that, hand that over to Ginger. It's really her piece, but yes, it's, they're in my wish list right now on Amazon. As soon as we get the grant money, yeah, they'll be on order. Nice. Okay, so I'm curious, what did you guys see in the original lines? Well, you know, now I know during this project, kids can move these lines around if they want, right? Well, they're kind of stationary. Okay, so they're stuck. So it's so it has to be just the way they are. We can rotate right. it around any way they want. Correct. Because they're stuck on Correct. here yet. So here's, you know, just looking at it, you know, right off the bat, I, I see some hair and a smiley face, and I see this little part over here. That's his ear. Oh, brilliant! Like I definitely, see, I definitely see an ear there. I'm not sure what the little, what the little squiggles on the bottom are yet, but I, but I definitely see a face. And I, I think, you know, scientifically, we know that people tend to see faces in different things. You know, it's, it's the way our, you know, human brain processes. So I guess that's probably not all that original. But. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> what did right, you see, Karen? I saw a face in mine too, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let me see, what'd you come up with? Okay. So I saw an eyebrow. Oh. And I thought the squigglies up top would make good hair, so I just continued it on the side, and then that, that other part would be the nose, right? And then I figured this maybe could be like a little river, Crimea River, I don't know, you know. It's brilliant. Something like that. You kind of have like her nose. It's like a zoomed yeah. in section of her face. Yeah. That was fun. That was fun. That was brilliant <laughs> is what that was. And I haven't had a chance to do my own drawing yet, but I, I've showed it to a couple of other teachers, and they see water. Okay. This was going to be a boat. Ah. And this would be the start of clouds. So they were making a whole scene with hmm. that. 
So there's, like I said, you can start it from any direction. Mm -hmm. See what comes up and what you see. And on the website is, uh, I should tell you, it's squiggles15.weebly.com is where people can go register. And we're asking people to register throughout the month of April, well, at least until the 17th. So we'll give you a few weeks. Then on the 20th, we'll give you your match partners because what we want you to do is the same thing we did right here. We want you to show the artwork to another classroom. What did you see? And oh, mine is a picture of a zoo. Oh, I really saw a picture of a boat. Or I saw a face. And see what they see between different classrooms. So we're asking until the 17th, all grade levels come join in. So do you girls and guys already have some people in mind? Well, I've, I've already talked to my art teacher. And um, so here's here's the issue that we're going to have. And we're going to have, we'll, you know, we'll find a way around it. But um, she's, uh, she's a rock star, you know, Deb Pulse in my building. You know, we've had her on for our uh, EdTech Chat and Two game shows before. Um, but, but she is an absolute rock star in what she does in the art classroom. And uh, she's gone to a very student-centered model in her classroom where instead of, like, teaching them a project and all the kids are working on it, like, the kids are free to work on whatever they're passionate about. And so she's got kids sculpting at the same time that other kids are weaving and other ones are... Um, so her classroom is just awesome. And she actually uses, like, um, augmented reality apps so that there's, like, mini lessons where you can scan her wall and see, like, hey, I'd really like the sculpt today. How do I do that? Boom, use the iPad and, and you get the lesson. Um, so, but because she doesn't have a full class that's going to be working on one thing... Um, we talked about some different things, like maybe she pulls all of the kids that are interested in, in doing the Squiggles project um, and has them as kind of re one registered class, and then we find a time where all of them can get together in Skype or something like that. Um, but we've, we've already talked, and, you know, yeah, we'll, we'll make it. I love it. that. Well, and even on the extensions page, we put a piece in there of if you want to make this be a trigger for an Erasmus sort of a thing or some of the other tools out there that do that, It'd be interesting to see somebody pulled up the picture or on one end, and then the other class could scan it with their iPads to see it come. Oh, that's back. cool! Yeah. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? That, that would be, be more fun. than cool. That'd be awesome. <laughs> or it's really awesome. Really awesome. <laughs> really awesome. <laughs> and what if we actually turn some of these faces into chatter pics where they talk? I love it. I love it. Yeah. The the creativity is limitless, honestly. So we <laughs> would love to. See what you guys come up with. The hashtag is Awesome Squiggles. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the project is Squiggles of Awesome, but the hashtag is Awesome Squiggles. So I know it's see, a little I, See, now I'm, I'm thinking about extension activities now, right? So what if we took those pictures and saved them since they're, you know, like we were working on iPads? Save them into the iPad if, if, as, you know, like background scenes for the kids that make um, make scenes, and then have them, like, act out something in front of their scene using the green screen app. That would be cool. Yeah. I love this idea, Mike. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be amazing? You say like, and that could be the trigger. Is their artwork? So if the kids wanted to watch the video, oh my! Yeah, God. yeah, so many possibilities. It's just all. It's it's good stuff. Most definitely, and I will tell you that there is one rule in the project: you can't cover up the lines. We mm -hmm. still have to be able to see the lines into it. So you have to make the lines part of the project. So that's the only rule that we have. Um, because if you end up with a whole thing that doesn't relate at all, you're like, okay, well, where are the four lines? Yeah. <laughs> so we need that one piece in there. And abstracts are okay. We definitely have some amazing modern artists who, who do abstract art. And this, if you come up with something that's different, go for it. But we still want to see those four lines on the page. But that's the only rule. I'm just thinking about nice little art shows here that we could have with our awesome squiggles. <laughs> oh man, the squiggly yeah. art show! Yeah. Yeah, like a like a um, you know, what if we did like a virtual online art show opening? That'd be pretty cool too. That would be. What's we that? Do, we could do this. Absolutely. Because all we need is if you have uploaded your images into some sort of a place like a Flickr or an Animoto or whatever it is, all we need is the link. Right. And we'll put it in our gallery. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this, we're gonna we're gonna make awesome stuff happen here. We need a squiggle art. Yeah, our our art gallery. Oh, let's see. Right. There's one on the site. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we're gonna make this happen. So we just need to get classes registered for the next three weeks, and then we'll help getting you get you connected for your partner classroom to share. And of course, we'd love to see your artwork on our page. 
So definitely, uh, we're looking forward to it. It would be interesting, I think, is if the students have created art, if they've labeled it, like what did you see? Because mm -hmm. it may be difficult for other students to interpret what you saw, especially right. if there is some sort of an abstract piece. But go ahead and name it. Great artwork all has a name. So mm -hmm. name your artwork as well and see what we come up with. That's great stuff. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see what people come up with. It's going to be a lot of fun. So here's, here's, a, here's another question. Okay. Okay. So suppose we had um, someone that wanted to participate that wasn't a class. Could they just send an image for our gallery? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. If they don't want just to be part of yeah. so, so just tweet it out with the hashtag or send it to us. Yep. Awesome squiggles. They can put it out there and then we'll add that because we'll be following the hashtag as well. Right. Um, another idea, and I don't know if, you, if it's an idea for everyone, but having students take pictures through the process of the art making. You know, especially if you're going to print it out and do painting because we really are accepting any art medium that you wish. So if students want to even do clay, they're going to have to build you know, reproduce the line somehow in three dimensions, or I don't know, they'll go from that, but they, they could do three dimensions, is fine with me. You want to do collage, material, art, paint, oil, I don't care, oil pastels, you choose what works for you. But if we took photos through the process, that would be a great reflection tool for students to say, this is what I saw at first, and I started to think over here, and I started to think over here, and then here's my final product. That could be kind of cool. I think, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I'm excited, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Do you, think, do you think we're going to get lots of friends to join? I, I think hope so. so. I think so. OK, so I'm, I'm going to be hoping that we hit six continents. Oh, I think we'll do that easy. I mean, I, I mean easy. There's only six continents with kids on them, right? So you know, <laughs> we're shooting pretty high there. But I, but I think we'll do it. I think we'll do it? Um, what if what if we somehow ask some scientists in Antarctica to be a part of it? And we make it seven continents. That, that would be, would super be awesome. Fun. Yeah, we might have to do that. We might see a few penguins or something. Oh, that would be too cool. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Let's uh, yeah, let's let's send the invitation. Oh. And even if they don't have a class, you know, they can always tweet out their their creations on the hashtag, and we can add them to the gallery. Yeah, we need to make this a seven continent project. I agree. Wiggles <laughs> <laughs> of awesome around the world. Yep. Yep. No doubt. Okay, so that's our news for today. Mike, is there anything else that we need to mention? Um, no, just one thing that I'm kind of excited about that we're working on. Um, our kindergarten kids started a project where uh, school-wide we've been growing vegetables um, over the course of the year. And they were going to use the vegetables to, uh, as a farm-to-table pro pro uh, project where they were going to plant them in a garden at a local restaurant and the restaurant was going to use the, the food. Um, okay. But for one reason or another, that kind of fell through and the, and the restaurant's not going to open. Um, so we're looking at shifting our, our focus. And actually, what uh, I, I like the new focus even better. Um, we're going to be looking as a school next year to put together a project where we grow vegetables um, in some kind of community garden or school garden that are then going to be used for the local food pantry. So um, since it's likely that I'm going to be teaching science next year, that's a pretty natural connection. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. That's awesome. Yeah. And you know, there are quite a bit of grants out there if you look now at the Grant Wrangler for organic gardens in schools. Yeah. So you might be able to find something. But how awesome would it be if you were to collaborate with Burpee or one of these other ones to, to help with the process? Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're pretty excited about, you know, we're just in the beginning stages of trying to hash it out and figure out where we're going to go. Um, I definitely love to get in touch with Stephen uh, Ritz, who's the, um, one of the top ten finalists for the Global Teacher Prize in the Bronx who started the Green Bronx machine and, um, you know, they, they grow their own uh, produce and vegetables oh, that's uh, awesome. in, the, in the South Bronx and uh, wow. kids bring home fresh produce to their to their houses. Um, I'd like to get in touch with him and, and find out some of the things that he's doing and maybe, uh, since it's only two hours away, take a visit there. Um, uh, but yeah, we've got we've got a lot of a lot of ideas that we're kicking around. So I'm not sure how it's going to come together, but I'm, I'm really excited about the possibilities. Oh, man, that's going to be amazing. Yeah. Karen, any news from the Texas front? Oh, geez, there's so much is happening right now, big whirlwind, but um, mostly a whole lot when it comes to um, Office 365 and our websites. And um, our, our district actually had a STEM conference for K through 2, and so we got to share right at the last minute kind of a, you know, can you guys do something um, technology related with science? And 
So my buddy Julie and I got to present um, with teachers that they had uh, parts of a plant kind of coming up in the curriculum, and so we brought real plants, yay, and they used their iPads to get real close to the roots and take pictures of all of the different parts of the plant and bring it together to share their understanding in uh, the Shadow Puppet app. Mm -hmm. And they had such a great time, like just, just realizing or just making that connection that you don't have to do something extra with the technology. It's bringing, in, bringing it in to be a part of your lesson. So we're yeah. like, you know, you have your student photographer, you know, these different things that you can do with this technology and the fact that the kids could just get really close in and, and, and see things that they don't typically see when they're just looking at a plant. So, so you know, you know, we're just, we're just kind of trekking on and trying to make learning fun here. <laughs> you had mentioned this weekend that you bought a new macro lens for your, your phone. I did. It's so cool. How cool would that be to use with the, the plant? Exactly. Together. And, and especially when they're learning about pollen, I mean, I know they could look in, but there's nothing like that view that you get. So, yeah, I'm carrying it with me. I'm, like, waiting for any opportunity to connect it to my phone and take some pictures. I was trying to... How do you connect it? Huh? How do you connect it? How does it go on there? Uh, so, yeah, it's got this little connector thingy. And it's I have to pull wild. my... Yeah, it's cool. Um... It, it was my birthday present to myself. I decided, you know, I kind of need this thing. But, um... It comes with oh, four different so lenses. Fun. Yeah, it just snaps on your iPhone. They have a, one for a Samsung, too. And then the macro is actually I have to pull off because there's a fish-eyed lens and a wide-angle lens. Wow. But there's two different macros, so then this one would allow me to take a picture of something macro, which is kind of cool. And That's awesome. And the did other you say, side, what, did, what did that run you, Karen? Oh, it was $79. No, <laughs> oh, that's nothing. I that's have fine. to have it, though. Um, <laughs> I, I bought myself a weekend safari in Kenya for, for my birthday. <laughs> so so 70, 79 bucks for a lens. You're fine. But you can, you can, go, you can you know, it, it, one side will go over the front-facing camera, and the other side will go over the back-facing camera. So you can use either side, which is a lot of fun. So, so you know, I'm having too much fun with this, carrying it with me. I got, got my nice little necklace. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm like, oh, I wanted to get a picture of a bee, but I, I, I couldn't get too close to him, so, mm. you know, oh, uh, I'm going to be safe, too, but I'm going to I'm gonna stretch first. a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. But a tool like that would open up doors, because will it work on an iPad? Do they have one for an iPad? You know, I haven't tried, um, but that is definitely something they need. I just saw an Apps Gone Free, though, today, that they have a fish-eyed lens, it's not a macro lens um, that's mm. free today. I, I'm, so I was Googling and trying to explore, well, why, why would I use a fisheye lens? Because I really don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but a nice different view of the world and different lines. So, hmm. Yeah. And I mean, I, coming, coming from a photographer, I mean, I've, I've done, you know, photography for years and, and sold pictures and all that. You know, those, you know, $79 for a lens that does all of that for your iPhone is an absolute bargain. I mean, when you, when you look at what camera lenses cost for DSLRs and you know obviously you're getting better picture quality if you're using a, a more expensive camera but uh, yeah. you know, just have the ability to take those those types of pictures I mean 79 bucks is awesome and I, I thought it was a pretty good deal I'm gonna show you my picture if uh, if you can see it let's see so that's yeah. one that I took with my macro lens and, and I wow. know I can't zoom in and show you but do you see the pollen oh my god yeah. it's so awesome and that was in my little you know potted plant outside in my garden and and my garden looks really sad but by looking at these pictures like wow I have some, some beauty <laughs> wow. in my yard. Those are great. Wow. I have a beautiful yard and I didn't even know it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like <laughs> close in there. Woo! Check it out. Just like the little buds from the rose bush. I mean the leaves. It's beautiful. beautiful. That's excellent. Yeah. So I had some fun snapping photos. Yes, it was great. <laughs> I, I think it's brilliant, actually, and bring all this piece together. So, Mike, if you do get the grant for your organic garden, I do think you need to make sure you have some of these lenses. Yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, the, um, the kindergarten teacher who's, whose idea this was, uh, Mrs. Conklin, to put all this together, um, she's in the process of writing a grant, um, the same grant that, that's sending me to Kenya this year. She's writing, uh, you know, possibly to get some funding for next year. So we'll have to make sure that she includes some of those lenses in her. So in her I have this. I had this thought. I'd, w I'd gone to this presentation at TCEA, and there was a teacher talking about how parents were donating their old iPhones because they got their new ones. And so iPhone 5s, if anyone wanted to donate an iPhone 5 to your classroom, these are a lot cheaper for iPhone 5. In, fa in fact, I found when, my, when I first 
wanted one of these. I was at Target and they were on clearance for thirty nine dollars, I think. And so wow. I was like, oh, what? But it wasn't for my phone, so I, you know. <laughs> I've got a five S, so thirty nine dollars sounds great. <laughs> yeah, and so it was on the clearance aisle, and then of course the newer one cost more. But but even there, the cost is a, is it's a lot cheaper, and the iPhone five has a good camera too. You know. Yeah. 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 I think it's fantastic. So I love the fact that we're all creative today, friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anything anything good going on your end, Diane? You know, um, launching the project is kind of the big thing this week. And uh, the next thing coming up is that I'll be heading to Tennessee uh, for to meet Dolly Parton. <gasps> That's right. Yes, cool. yes. Definitely share that story. Yeah, it's the Chasing Rainbows Award, and it's for Teachers of the Year they pick a teacher of the year out every year who has overcome a lot of personal um, struggles in order to become a great teacher and in other words do you dream big and yes you do I yes, try to dream yes, big you do. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> absolutely so, yeah. well, I'm, I'm so happy for you Diane that's just that's just awesome well I'm I'm a little humbled by this one because this one's personal you know yeah. and this one goes to my mom as much as it goes to me because if we didn't dream that life could be better then we might still be in that rigmarole so it's kind of like we broke past the at-risk label and you know I, you dream big great things happen for kids and that's just the way I look at it so yeah and you know Dolly Parton's kind of a dreamer herself if you're not familiar with the imagination station have you heard of this yes mm -hmm. yeah. okay so and if anyone in our audience is unfamiliar if you are in an area where United Way does some supportive kinds of things, you can look to see if D Dolly Parton's Imagination Station will work with children ages zero to five. And if you qualify for that, and I, they didn't even, I mean, it was really anybody in the zip code is really how it worked, your child can receive every month a free board book to open up their minds for reading and imagination and it's completely free to the families so if you are curious about being a part of imagination station I would encourage that greatly and this will be a part of an extension kind of of that so yeah I'll get to meet Dolly here in a few weeks and yeah it's kinda cool so it's more than cool yeah and and well deserved that's that's great well thank you so uh, I'll have to give uh, reviews of that in a few weeks but until then, let's talk about what's for lunch. Mike, what's for lunch? Uh, leftover meatloaf, potatoes, and broccoli. Sounds good. Karen? Good. Leftover chicken fajitas. Woohoo! <laughs> I had both of these this weekend, my friends. <laughs> my, uh, my leftovers today are actually a turkey goulash, a ground Ooh. turkey goulash. So uh, that, that, I may have got the mmm this week. Yeah, you know? I, think, I think you win. I think you win this week. <laughs> Not okay. that I would ever say anything bad about my wife's meatloaf, but right. uh, turkey goulash sounds amazing. <laughs> I know your wife's a rock star cook, so I'm sure she is. Too, so it's good. Okay, my friends, we'll, that's all for this week, and we'll see you next time on EdTech Chat and Chew. Bye, Bye everyone. Everyone.